Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk into a topic that every month merchant should have on the list. It's the economy overall. So we want to talk on, about the topic on how to survive a recession and thrive and make the best out of it. With me on the show today to talk about this is Mario Peschev. He is a business advisor, fractional CXO, CEO of Rush, Defrix, Gross Shuttle, and other products. He is also an angel investor of Seedblink in Bulgaria and ambassador of Flipper in Bulgaria. He has been in web development and business space for over 17 years, and on a day-to-day -day basis, he's wearing different hats from working with tech teams to creating business solutions for Shopify and WooCommerce vendors. So he has a very vast background in running a business, and that's one we're going to talk about. Hi, Mario. How are you today? Uh, doing great, Klaus, and thanks for the intro. Um, I, I think I should probably hire you for my next PR person, so if you're open for that, <laughs> gig. <laughs> Mario, we are all business owners and we are all sort of victims of what is happening in the world right now. And it seems that we are a bit in for a rocky road, road ahead. Um, from your perspective, what's, what do you think is happening right now um, with the economy, with recession, with inflation? Just give me a bit of an idea. Yeah, totally. So as you mentioned, I'm involved with a number of different businesses, right? On the one hand, it's Rush, which is a Shopify app, and we have over 2,700 stores. On the other end, there's uh, Devrix, and we made some of the largest publishers on the planet, including affiliate and e-commerce. Uh, also as a business advisor, work with hundreds of businesses. So I have a pretty diverse perspective and uh, kind of an outlook of the general macro economy, and it's something that I'd like to kind of do for for fun even though it's not the funniest thing for most people out there uh, but on the bright side honestly the, the thing is looking into the the latest macro results uh, looking into how the fed has slowed down the interest rate increases lately even though they still did a uh, point uh, 25 percent uh, just a week ago uh, we are actually in a pretty good state right now uh, and I just want to reassure everyone else listening to the podcast that despite everything that has happened over the past year despite the several waves of layoffs among the largest you know, companies out there, the major drop of S&P 500, we are in a, in a really good state right now. For example, just uh, taking a look at the Q2 data that was just released in uh, mid, well, late in July and early in August, uh, Meta just reported 11% um, revenue growth. And as we know, Meta is primarily making money off of ads, and ads are coming from brands trying to advertise their businesses, which in result means that, uh, you know, maintaining the same cost per click for the most part on Meta's end, businesses, brands, stores, publishers, you know, DTCs, manufacturers, everyone else, 3PLs, are still investing and investing 11% heavier as compared to last year in Q2 this year. That's one thing. Alphabet, uh, which is Google, and this includes Google and YouTube, they exceeded expectations both on top and bottom lines. And the Google Cloud revenue is also by 28%, which again, in turn means that more businesses are signing up and hosting on Google Cloud, and also everyone using any form of Google Cloud resource, including BigQuery, which is a main machine for delivering data and storing and aggregating data. Uh, again, that, that's also growing in Q2. Shopify, of course, everyone's interested in that, reported 31% growth in total revenue and cash flow. Uh, and it's also cash flow positive for a third quarter in a row, right? Amazon, once again, they just had Prime Day, mid of July, uh, and the Prime Day numbers were uh, record high this year. Uh, I, I think they generated about 375 million orders over the course of 48 hours, up from 300 million last year, right? So it's over 20%, 24% or so increase compared to what they did last year. So all things considered, when you look at the general macro, people are still spending, businesses are still spending on ads, uh, consumer intents and behaviors are still up in the air. And um, and we are uh, in for a pretty pretty good rest of 2023. Uh, 2023. The the last thing I again I, I just want to remind is that normally Q4 is the strongest period of the year for everyone in e-commerce, meaning that uh, considering we are just about to enter Q4, uh, we should be pretty safe up until the the end of the year. And unless there are any surprises, Q1 should be again slower than Q4, of course, but hopefully not as bad. But at the very least, uh, the rest of this year should be smooth sailing uh, onward. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I can, I'm in Argentina right now and they have sort of hyperinflation here. It's kind of interesting because the economy here is actually booming. So the mm -hmm. money gets devalued at a very, very fast rate. And everyone is shopping. Yeah. Restaurants are full. Um, everyone is carrying around shopping bags because people think is I rather buy today because tomorrow it will be more expensive. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen next year. We might see something like there. Now, there's obviously certain industries that do better than others right now. And um, that applies for e-commerce as well. From your perspective, working with so many businesses, do you see specific verticals or industries that have a good time and some that are but uh, have a, a struggle right now? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the jewelry market, bracelets, um, beauty, cosmetics, all of that is still booming, which is, I would say it's slightly interesting because normally it's kind of more on the luxurious or it's kind of higher on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid. But at the end of the day, this is still a market that's uh, that's still booming, and all of our stores, especially on the rush end, uh, are generating extremely, uh, you know, incredible results right now. Uh, apparel is going down. All, all forms of clothing are generally going down, from what we see, primarily due to the fact that after three years of a recession, people are trying to go out more and and just spend kind of more time. Uh, trying out clothes and and those not really deal with any of the specific risks of returns and you know wrong sizing, wrong clothing, wrong, uh, wrong uh, clothing in itself are are some of the specific problems that most people are dealing with, which is why the kind of clothing industry is slightly worse than it uh, kind of uh, kind of used to be. Uh, groceries are up from what we see again consolidated data of over four hundred million in GMV that we generate that we you know, managed last year and more or less the same what we do this year is uh, groceries are still up and that's primarily prim uh, primarily due to the inflation, right? So the GMV is, is definitely up due to the inflation. The volume is slightly down because of the end of the pandemic, uh, but but it's, it's more or less still the same and slightly growing. So these are some of the patterns that we see. There's some seasonality as well. Uh, for instance, in April and May, we saw a lot of growth in the outdoor industry, right? Uh, anything for your garden, for your patio, for anything else that's kind of outdoors. Uh, this was a pretty strong, pretty significant category out there. Um, and uh, another thing, again, that we see right now is indoors kind of uh, home accessories, kitchen, uh, any additional stuff for indoors because again summer is going to be over soon and people are preparing just to to kind of uh renovate or or kind of add additional accessories to their homes mm -hmm. you mentioned before that people are still buying and q4 obviously is the strongest quarter of the year and um, merchants should be by now ready with their strategy what's happening in these three months to make the most out of it but you can also sort of um make your business more resilient resilient um, for mm. a recession and um, so there's some strategies around that tell me about how you would do that i would say that uh, one of the key things and uh, my rules of thumb is diversification right whatever you do regardless of whether you're in dtc and kind of building a strong brand or in drop shipping make sure that you have different Make sure that you diversify as best as possible. Uh, I'm going to give a, a, a specific example here. One of the challenges that uh, I deal with as an advisor speaking to uh, different store owners is they have one source of traffic and one specific website, probably one or two specific products or SKUs that are killing it, right? They're generating over 80, sometimes over 90% of their revenue. And that that's great up until it isn't. Just earlier today, I heard from a friend who got, they woke up and got their Facebook account banned due to a random post they posted, or they may or may not have posted. You now, it could have been a bot or their account got hacked or it's something they posted as a comment and got flagged, whatever it is. So their account got banned. And we know that Meta is the key channel for uh, generating revenue and sales for most stores. So imagine you wake up one day, Meta has banned your account. You may have to appeal. It may work eventually, but you're probably going to be disconnected for like at least a week. Uh, and and that's that's a pretty frightening thought in itself. So most people are dealing with, once again, one source of traffic, one specific store or kind of a brand, and one or two specific products that they're dealing with. So first and foremost, diversification is key. Make sure you expand the number of SKUs or expand the number of products if you can and especially if you're in dropshipping, just launch different stores, right? We work with dropshippers that own 10, 
15, even 20 different stores, especially on the Rush side, uh, because you know, Rush is supporting so many different things for dropshippers in particular on the Shopify end. Uh, but lots of, again, entrepreneurs launching 20 different stores, right? One is for electronics, one is for, you know, some beauty stuff, one is for outdoors, one is for jewelry, one is for bear oil, right? Different SKUs for different kind of products just to diversify. Uh, so that's kind of one thing in terms of channels. If you're on Meta, look into TikTok, look into influencer marketing, look into ICO, look into brand attribution. Uh, and, and kind of the last thing is, uh, again, I always advise regardless of whether you're brand first or more about the traditional dropshipping, which is, uh, you know, we launch something, we scale, and then we can launch 50 other different stores. Uh, building a brand is always helpful because you retain your audience in the long run, right? They're going to stick around. They're going to convert better. Uh, they're going to support you. There's in some cases, especially in terms of uh, in kind of in times of recession, we've seen people prioritizing their favorite brand just so that they can support that, even if it means cutting on, uh, you know, alcohol or going out or anything like that, right? Just the sheer support being a true fan of a specific brand or specific product is so helpful that they can literally save you uh, in times of a recession. So definitely think about it. Yeah, we're definitely on the same page there. So I, diversification, I also pray that to everyone, probably the most important thing you can do. Now it comes with the drawback that a lot of smaller and solopreneurs, small and medium enterprise, they only have the skill set built up for one specific ad platform for Facebook ads or for Google ads, yeah. and <clears throat> then they struggle. So, but it's definitely worse to find ways to um, test all the other platforms and see where your audience is. Now, I like that you say build up your followership, your, your super fans, because they will carry you, you through the bad times. Mm. Looking into a little bit of strategies on how you can facilitate apps or solutions on your website, on your store, like pay later um, features, what do you think would work to basically put um, draw people in for a long term into your business? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there are several, th uh, several things here. So first off, in terms of brand building, uh, I think that lots of store owners are under valuing and under appreciating the, the importance of building their own personal brand. And that's something that's really unique to the e-commerce space, right? So as someone who also runs other businesses and is an angel investor, speaks to investors and journalists and, you know, other CEOs and managers and so on, my go-to, I spend a good chunk of my time on LinkedIn. Right. So I go on LinkedIn, look at brands, look at people. Uh, and, and essentially that's kind of how we connect and grow. Alternatively, I spend time on Twitter because lots of the VCs and angel investors and also store owners and startup founders, including Shopify app founders and journalists, which is essentially media and PR, are also on Twitter. Right. So these are the two networks that I use. And again, I understand there are lots of Facebook communities, there are Discord communities, there's Instagram. So I'm also there, even though not as active. But I'm always surprised how hard it is sometimes to find a store owner uh, or even a store page just listed out there, right? Uh, several examples. Yesterday, I wanted to connect with a store owner that uh, signed up for our, our Shopify app uh, just because they were local. I, I, I knew they were in Bulgaria, so I just wanted to kind of reach out to them. And I couldn't, right? Uh, I knew the founder's name. I couldn't find him online. Um, I, I found their Facebook page. It had zero posts whatsoever, right? They were generating say, uh, half a million in, um, GMV, but they were nowhere to be found, right? No LinkedIn, no Twitter, no nothing, right? Uh, another example is we had a partner, uh, a partner agency that signed up with us probably three months ago. And, uh, you know, they signed up one store, another store, we generated so much revenue for their clients that they signed up another 10 stores over the course of probably six weeks. Uh, so I just wanted to send them a gift, right? Uh, it took us probably a week to get their office details in order to ship. And even knowing their office details, I just sent them a basket yesterday, by the way, uh, uh, with, you know, um, uh, with champagne and cheese and biscuits and all that fancy stuff, just as a gratitude gift, right? Just supporting us and kind of loving what to do. But, but it was so hard just finding these people people online. Now I have their names and phone numbers and others and companies, and I can still find nothing about them. So, uh, you know, bottom line, I digress a bit, but but it's so 
it's so important. It, it makes so much difference building a brand to be recognizable, to be known for something uh, that it carries so much value that there's hardly any reason to, to avoid that. So this is probably going to be kind of one of the, the key things I would like to mention. Uh, you also brought up uh, uh, buy now, pay later. That's definitely a thing in, um, in 2023, right? It's uh, growing, it's booming. There are specific industries, specific categories. On the one hand, we have teenagers, well, late teenagers, you know, college students and so on in their early 20s. They cannot afford some stuff, but they like, right? So they're trying to spread around and do the credit card alternative nowadays, which is buy now, pay later. Nothing wrong about that if they're, you know, cautious consumers in the future. There's also people trying to buy new equipment or trying to make use of specific deals, like like cheaper laptops or cheaper tablets or so that they can possibly use for work, right? And can, you know, they simply cannot afford that yet. So uh, right now, there are around 360 million buy now, pay later users, right? The market itself is worth over $150 billion. Uh, so so we, we definitely uh, shouldn't neglect that. So uh, all things considered, lots of things that people can do, uh, especially, you know, uh, store owners and uh, both drop shippers and brands and print on demand and everyone else in between. And kind of one of the easiest things, uh, again, speaking as a, a Shopify app owner, is uh, setting up rush. Uh, we've seen that first and foremost, it generates an average 2 to 7% increase in GMV and average order value for our store owners, right? You set it up, tracking page comes with recommended widgets, with uh, bundles and products and top sales and so forth. That alone, just setting it up gets two to 7% increase in average order value. That's one thing. Uh, our higher tier customers get access to Clavio workflows. Uh, these flows have been tried and tested, and we know that on average, we get a 5X return on investment over the first 30 days. In fact, uh, some of these agencies that I've been uh, mentioning, setting up users, they send the screenshots 48 hours, 72 hours later saying, oh my God, guys, what we see is $2,000 or more generating extra revenue just from the flows alone, right? So we have Clavio, we have the upsells on the page, and that's an easy win. Uh, we, we have several you know, of our brands like Primal Harvest, uh, like uh, Burger, like some of the other players that we work with, some of them have reported over 2,000% ROI. Now, imagine spending $100 and, you know, getting 20X, right? Just getting $2,000 back. Investing $1,000, getting 20 grand back. Uh, you know, if we were able to do that in real life outside of e-commerce, everyone would be a millionaire overnight just because it's now possible. So uh, what I'm saying is, again, Rush is uh, one of the solutions that it's kind of set and forget, and our team can definitely help you out with that. That's one of the solutions, but look into other alternatives and other options to just provide better user experience to your customers, right? Abandoned cards, again, reasons Clavio, Omniscient, and everyone is important. Abandoned cards are increasing additional revenue for you, right? Surveys, uh, all that kind of um, wheel of fortune type of thing so that you can capture emails or capturing SMS, the ability to send, you know, follow-up emails and campaigns, uh, make use of all the, you know, back to school campaigns. Uh, now we are, you know, now we have uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Christmas. There's so many different holidays in between that uh, people need to, to tap into. One of the things, for instance, in and I mentioned Prime Day a bit earlier on the Amazon end. Uh, again, Amazon generated, uh, uh, sent, shipped over 375 million orders <laughs> over the course of two days. Uh, and, and speaking to Shopify owners, I'm saying, are you ready for Prime Day? And they're, no, this is a, a Shopify holiday. Uh, sorry, this is an Amazon holiday. And I'm like, what are you talking about? People are out there ready for a major holiday. Amazon has invested, you know, maybe over 50 million or so in advertising to make sure they are ready for this day. And you're not tapping into that opportunity. At the same time, I'm giving a call to an FBA aggregator, right? A business running over a hundred different brands. And I'm asking them, are you ready for Prime Day? And they're, we sure are. Half of our stores already have banners and deals up and discounts and all of that because it's the same holiday for the shopping period, right? Um, so yeah, again, I can rumble about that for, probably for hours, but so many additional opportunities. Just zoom out a little bit, take a look at the broader e-commerce ecosystem. It's so 
diverse, right? See what happens in WooCommerce, see what happens in Amazon, in Etsy, in Walmart, in Target. They run different campaigns. They compete with each other. Uh, and, and, and just learn from them, right? Try to get the best practice for different systems and uh, services and apps and brands and uh, everyone. And this is really going to help you elevate and optimize everything for uh, uh, your digital business. Well, there's so much good tips in there. So I uh, want to take one step um, back. Obviously, being um, present with your contact details in the market is, is so important on so different, many, many levels. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, it, on your website, and I see that a, a lot, specifically on drop shopping, st drop shipping stores that sort of trying to hide you. There's no contact details whatsoever. That does not really build trust. That does not really help you with building up enough trust to build a brand. So mm -hmm. you should have your contact details on your website with who's behind the company, who runs the show, maybe even who's the founder and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And on the other end, um, as you said, be as a founder, as an entrepreneur, be public on LinkedIn, on Twitter, as you said, um, because that helps you sometimes even if things do not go, go well, if you need a co-financer, uh, if you need to have a, another partner, whatsoever. If you have built a network there, that will definitely help you to reach out and find the right person to help you with whatever challenge you have in your business. I have plenty of examples on how that works in a positive favor for you. Now, before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything you want to share with the listeners that we haven't covered yet? Uh, I really loved your comments on branding. And again, I just want to reiterate. So if you take a look at, uh, again, what my Twitter feed looks like, right? This morning, looking into the founder of Rich, looking for a content strategist and willing to pay a million dollars for them, right? Uh, we have, you know, founders of uh, Jim Shark or Woody or, or, or any of the top famous popular brands. There's Nick Sharma who's so active out there, right? This is you know, Twitter and LinkedIn and all the other networks. So there's a reason why the guys that we admire and we learn from are so loud out there. They're publicly available. They speak so much. They preach so much, right? And and not trying to learn from them is counterintuitive. So that's probably the only thing. It's it's nothing new. It's more about food for thought. Why, why does everyone successful spend so much time online? Because this is the way to connect, especially after three years of pandemic. So many people who weren't as active online are now online and they're already used to just being approachable, available. Uh, there are also specific, um, uh, you know, specific services such as, uh, uh, what was it? It was Mastermind, Masterclass, uh, just uh, just forgot the name of it. But you can actually reach out to these D2C influencers uh, and speak with them and connect with them. Master Pass, yes, this uh, this was it. So go on Master Pass. You can speak to some of the brightest minds on the planet. Uh, so right now, these people are spending more time online. They're at the tip of your fingers. And just building brand awareness means that you're going to be more visible, more recognizable, more trustworthy, uh, and expand your network as a result. Mm -hmm. Now, with your vast experience, you're helping your clients. Tell me a little bit about who is your client and how do you help? Well, that probably depends on the different uh, uh, businesses that they're going with. Uh, but uh, to sum it up, my main focus is working with different businesses from the broader Shopify, Amazon e-commerce ecosystem, right? We work with uh, software as a service, we work with data companies, we work with 3PLs, we work with manufacturers, we work with factories, and we're just trying to build that bundle. My personal philosophy is that the e-commerce is a broader industry. And as I said earlier, most people are just kind of trying to niche into one very specific thing. Well, that's not how it works. We partner up with other people, right? On the real shop, we have partnership managers. We have people who build relationships with other app founders, with uh, agencies, with team developers, with PPC people, with conversion rate optimizers, with everyone else, because we want to make sure that whenever we connect to someone, right, a Shopify store, a 3PL, someone who wants a kind of a deeper, broader integration, we want to make sure that whatever problems they face, we can include them as a bundle for them. Like say, hey, you know, we can set up Rush for you, for example, right? But on top of that, hey, did you know that you can set up, uh, you know, be profit for dashboards? And by the way, you know, in top of Clayview, you can also do retention.com for, you know, acquiring additional revenue from that. And we have a conversion rate optimizing expert. Here's an agency for that. Here's for that. So we want to be the, 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 our mission is just supporting businesses and supporting brands by all means with whatever they need, because 
uh, again, we've been in business long enough, and I myself, again, have been uh, in business for almost 20 years now. Uh, so I have had that fight already. I've walked the walk, and I I know what businesses are struggling with, right? On my own blog, I have the 38 biggest business challenges that companies face at different points in time. This is something that got picked up by over 30 universities out there, right? I get uh, reached out by Northeastern and by so, so many universities just using that as a resource. So again, helping uh, other people out, just being more present, being more public is not a bad thing. Like even if you're, even if you feel that drop shipping is just buying something you know, from Asia and selling to the States, that's not necessarily it, right? You're providing opportunities. You're giving the ability for people to reach and learn about this product because otherwise they wouldn't, to get an opportunity to get clear, transparent shipping, um, you know, connect with you, get the best offers, the best deals, because people are lazy. Don't forget that, people are lazy. Again, many price conscious shoppers, but people are generally lazy. So understanding that, means that you being the go-to place to provide these opportunities, provide this product is not a bad thing. And you can actually even get to the point where you charge high ticket drop shipping items uh, instead of just trying to be beat uh, to the race to the bottom. So again, some food for thought here. No, that's very, very true. Mario, where can people find out more about you? Uh, my personal website is mariopeshev.com. People can look up Mario Peshev on LinkedIn, on Twitter, which I spend most of my time. Uh, again, for Shopify stuff, Rush.app is our uh, own app. And um, yeah, feel free to reach out personally if you have any follow-up questions. But um, yeah, it was definitely a pleasure, Klaus. And thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to, to talk about the broader ecosystem once again. Absolutely. I will put the links in the show notes, then you're just one click away. And thanks for giving us an overview. I think um, the future is bright for e-commerce. No one should be um, be scared for what's coming. And if you really, to our listeners, if you really want to talk to someone who knows what's happening out there and needs some help, then please reach out to Mario. Thanks so much for your time today and talk soon. Thank you. My pleasure. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce Merchant Pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now. You will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails, and ads and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you make most of your online business. Thank you as always for tuning in today. I appreciate you until next time and I talk to you soon.